Edge Stonewall, how are you doing? Good morning, guys, and welcome to Wednesday. Oh, uh, well, 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 it is Wise, Wise Word, Word Wednesday. Wednesday. It is. And I am with the tremendous and incredible. <laughs> you are sweet, Miss Boswell, your school counselor, and I am with my very wise friend, Mr. Sizemore with CIS. And we are coming to you from Support, Support U News. News. Miss Boswell. Yes, sir. On Wise Word Wednesday, we have a tremendous surprise for Stonewall, don't we? I'm so excited about this, Mr. Sizemore. Now, we have two individuals. We do. But two, two special individuals. Very special. You want to introduce them? Really? Yes. Oh, excellent. Okay, guys. So today on Wise Word Wednesday, we're starting some special edition kind of things here at the end of school. And today... We don't have students, but we have two fantastic teachers who are going to come share some wise words with you. We have Miss Dowdy and Miss Cook. Come on in, ladies, and welcome hey to the Work You News. Are you ready to share some wise words with sure. us? Sure. Excellent. Thank you. All right, guys, so today on Wise Word Wednesday, our fantastic teachers are coming to us, and they're going to share a story from Character Building Day by Day by Andy Mather and Lewis B. Weldon. And today's story is on compassion. It's called Homesick. Ginger had a great day hiking and fishing with her friend Renee and her family. They grilled hot dogs, they roasted marshmallows by the fire that evening. Ginger loved staring into the leaping orange flames while the forest grew dark around them. But when it was time to go to bed, things changed. Ginger was homesick, and she couldn't fall asleep on that first night camping. She began to cry quietly. Renee shined a flashlight onto the tent ceiling and allowed her friend to roll over to face her friend. It's okay, she said. My mom and my dad and me are right here. I wish I had smiley, my teddy, Ginger said. Renee rolled up a soft t-shirt and tucked it into Ginger's arm. Close your eyes and pretend this is Smiley. Oh, that's silly, Ginger said, but she smiled a little bit. Just try it, Renee told her. So Ginger hugged the t-shirt tightly. Imagine that you're in your own bed at home. You're comfortable and safe. Ginger began to breathe more easily. The crying grew softer, and then it stopped. Soon she fell into a peaceful sleep. Okay, so describe a time you tried to make someone feel less lonely, worried, or scared. How did it go? What about a time someone helped you feel less lonely, worried, or scared? All right, so <clears throat> on the playground sometimes kids run around and they don't even pay attention to somebody being by themselves. And we'll call over and say, hey, look at John over there. He's on that buddy bench. Can you go over and see if he wants to play with you? And it makes both of them feel really good. I know for me, one time when I was about y'all days in middle school or elementary school, I went on a trip and I missed my mom and my family. I was a little homesick. And just a certain call, someone called me, a friend, and it made me feel better. I missed them and I was missing home. And it made me feel better when they, just a simple phone call. Excellent. Guys, so let's talk about that in class today. This is such an important question, and we can use the wisdom of our teachers and the wisdom of each other to know how we can help deal with those uncomfortable feelings that we have sometimes dealing with loneliness. So how can you show compassion today and teach others to show compassion around you? Let's talk about that in class. We hope you have a great day. Bye. Bye, guys. Have a great day.